please consider becoming a patron of the Ramen Raider. Patrons receive special benefits like bonus videos, voting on the Patrons' Choice Top 10, and early Top 10 list access. Visit patreon.com slash the Ramen Raider and become a patron today. Thank you. This is Hans the Ramen Raider coming at you with another episode of Instant Noodle Recipe Time, the show where I show you what to do with your instant noodles. But today, I got something a little different. A little different! Uh, I just woke up after uh, today's the day after my birthday. Had a wonderful day. Thank you to everybody who showed up at the party. Shout outs to. Uh, Paul and Travis and uh, Steve from over at uh, the Instant Noodles, uh, Instant Noodles, the Ramen Raider group. That was cool. Got to meet new people and stuff. Yeah. And today, oh man, I need I need one of these. Where's one of these? Oh man. Oh. Hold, hold on, bear with me. No, not that one. Not that one. That one. Ugh. I need to wake up. I'm not cooking anything this morning, but my lovely wife Kit was kind enough to spirit me over to the Bellevue Wajamaya the other day and allow me the privilege of getting new uh, garnish. And I'm going to bag it up, so I thought you might enjoy watching while I banter about said garnish. So let's get this going like that, right there. Uh, uh. There we are. So, what's this? This is that. upside down for you. It is. That's not helpful. There we go. There we go. So, I know some of you are going to be like, dude, you buy that? Why don't you just make it? Uh, like, I'm sorry, I'm not... I'm just not up to uh, spending... All the time. I mean, I don't have any time, man. I really don't. This is like... It's crazy. We just don't have any 
have any food. Anyways, this, do you know about this stuff? This actually serves a purpose. This is, you'll see this in stuff like this, you'll see it in, uh, comes with sushi. It has some kind of antibacterial deal going on with it. But yeah, it, it's actually a thing. I mean, it's, it's not just like, hey, let's put that little plastic piece of funk in there. It'll make it look better, because it really doesn't, but... Yeah, Chashu. I always, I always enjoy the first piece. Mmm. Wonderful stuff. But yeah, I gotta bag it up, because this all goes in the freezer. And I haven't had any in a while, that's why you've been seeing me use the, uh, oh, what do you call that stuff? Uh, see, that's a pain in the butt. That's too thick. I like it when they do thinner pieces. But I've been using that, uh, Yangtze barbecue pork, which, I mean, Technically, that is, it's not chashu, it's more like charsi eu, <laughs> which is like a little different, but I mean, it works, but I prefer using this. So I've got a series I'm going to do pretty quick of uh, the three new single pack hakubaku varieties and I wanted to make sure that I had chashu on hand to do that. I've got a, a shoyu, a miso, and a shio. And they do have a tonkatsu. I might have to see if I can get them to shoot me over a tonkatsu. Even though I guess that one's not in the single packs. But I love that one too. Yeah. Oh. But they do stuff like this. Like, uh, that's not a full piece. But there'll be a review with a not full piece. Yeah, this is the way I gotta do it, because this stuff isn't cheap. I mean, I've thought about making it, but I've got a buddy who makes it, and like, dude, make some, and like, put it on ice, and send it in the mail, but, nah. Uh, <laughs> Luckily they had some. I figured, I mean, what's the deal? People are running out buying toilet paper. You should be running out buying chashu. I'll, I'll have all the chashu. And you won't. Wow, that's a neat looking slice. That one looks nice. But I'm doing three different things today. So this is being the, this one being the easiest. This is like a perfect pack of it. These are all like nice and uniform, nice and round, nice and thin. It's a little loud. It's a little loud. I'll admit it, it's a little loud. So... Yesterday was my birthday, as I said, and uh, we went up to my ancestral homeland of Anacortes, Washington, and uh, 
My sister was like sending me messages. Yeah, my sister was there too. I shouldn't forget. My sister. And she was like, it's like really freaking cold here. I'm like, no. It's like March 14th. What would it be doing being cold? There's no way. And uh, we get up there. And it's at a place called Washington Park, which is right on the water. And there's a covered picnic shelter. And it was a beautiful sunny day, but it was windy. And with the wind chill, it was 23 degrees. I've had birthday parties there where it's just like dump and rain. But never, but you know, maybe like in the 40s. And I've had days with my birthday party where it's like absolutely beautiful and like 60 degrees and we're there until like the park rangers have to like kick us out <laughs> but this was a first it was beautiful sunny windy and arctic frozen so we moved it over the party over to my uh my mom and sister's house which was kind of weird because my mom like three weeks ago, she fell and shattered her femur, and she's 84. And I was really hoping to go and visit her because she's in a rehab right now. And I was really hoping to visit her, but with the uh, new restrictions, yesterday was the first day that nobody could, unless they were like medical personnel, could go in and actually visit people in the rehab because it was, you know, it's kind of like akin to a nursing home. So it's like, dude, really? <laughs> Great. So didn't get to go see my mom and my sister can't visit her and she's been over there a lot lately, of course. And like, no. Nah. So that's a bummer. She said now they uh, they had like a dining room and people would have meals in there and stuff. Now they've closed that. Uh, residents of the place aren't even supposed to leave their rooms. And uh, something like the, uh, the staff there has to have their temperature taken like five times a day. Whoa. That's kind of crazy but we don't want my mama getting sick because she's definitely in the high risk category. But yeah. And I got, my wife got me two new headlights for the stroller and helped me put them on yesterday which was cool thank you very much and they're bright it's a pair of thousand lumen floodlights and they're rechargeable and they are like I tried it when we got back last night I went out in the parking lot and I turned on the lights on the stroller and man people are gonna really freaking hate me which is exactly what I want will be seen but the thing that really, really sucks is the fact that it would be, we would get up, get everybody ready, Miles would head off to school on the bus, and then it would just be me and Mimi, and of course, then we could go for our walk, but my, you know, they've locked down all the schools, so I'm hoping maybe today, I'll take her out and blind some people, play some wild music. Yeah, the world has gone to hell in a handbasket, I tell you. And it seems like every day they add like a little something more, which I think is probably the best way to do it. I think people would wig out if uh, they put down all these restrictions, bam, all at once. They're gonna, I mean, you got places like all these different stores are starting to close early, you know, things like that. Uh-oh, we 
we got a problem. Maybe there's more in there. I hope there is. have to see. Oh, we might just barely have enough. Just barely. Well, <laughs> maybe not. Uh-oh. Hey, Kit. Is this the last of the Ziploc size, these bags? Okay, cool. One moment. All right, we are back, and uh, we got more Ziplocs, so thank you, Costco, for having Ziplocs. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of people didn't make it to the uh, birthday party, <laughs> but, uh... There were a lot of people saying that they were ill, or they had family that was ill, or all this stuff, which I didn't care for, you know. They're just people, for God's sake. Roll them out in the street. It's cold out there. They'll, they'll thaw out. But no, you know, nobody wanted to. Everybody's being draconian, except for my buddies, so, you know. Yeah, hopefully next year it'll be a bigger, bigger hangout and I can put up something with more notice. That was really cool that I got somebody who has been a reader for a long time to show up. That was rad. Thanks, Steven. I, I think what I really like to do eventually is get like a bunch of you guys and have like a meetup, maybe like at a logical date and time, you know, like. Maybe everybody could meet up down in Seattle. Maybe maybe even at like Wajamaya or something. That'd be kinda neat. Maybe somewhere somewhere cooler. Maybe we could all meet up like at the Asian Food Center on Aurora. Cause that's a place not everybody's been. Maybe even 99 Ranch. I mean there's a lot more stuff, and I could just like, everybody could follow me around the store, and it's like, yeah, here's all the crap I know about, and, you know. We could do a, a, a live stream of it and freak people out, get looked at funny. That'd be fun. Yeah, Alright, we're almost done with the chashu. And this is turning out to be just about perfect. There's a lot of good ones in here. I really like it when they look like that. I got that nice swirly. But yeah. It was like first thing this morning. I woke up like, I want to say like 20 minutes. If that before I hit record on this thing. And I was thinking like, hey, here's an opportunity to create some content for you. Alright. And there. We are. Mm. Oops. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, never touch your face. Never, ever touch your face. You don't know where it's been, do you? Of course not. Okay, let's do the count. How many reviews with Chashi will we be able to do? Two. Three. Four. Yes. Five. 
Yeah, this will last for a couple months. And, uh, if not more, this is this is a pretty big haul of Chasha. Yeah. Seven, yeah. <laughs> At least two months worth of reviewing. If not more than that. Maybe like three or four. So sweet. Prepped and ready for the freezer. Now we're gonna do our fish. Fish. Come a boco. Love knife. So this is a uh, kibun kamaboko aka steam surimi seafood red. There's all sorts of neat. Kamaboko, there's Kamaboko that has like little designs in it. Personally, my favorite, um, but I never really see a lot of different varieties these days. But this one, this one's always been good. I'll show you what I do with it. This one's really good when you're dealing with like udon. There it is. It's steamed. It's stuck to this block. It's got a little thing. Uh, these blocks, if you use a lot of kamaboko, are really good for like, uh, say you've got a bookshelf and it wants to lean forward. You lean it back, put a couple of these blocks in, solved. <laughs> so. So, what I do, let me make sure you can see what I'm up to here. What I do is I take the kamaboko and I run the knife backwards along it and separate it from the wood like that. That way, it's uh, easier and happier. That's how I'm gonna put it. Now, I just gotta cut it. Whoops. Mm. My son Andy really likes Kamaboko. It's like... He'll sit here and uh, 
eat up Hamabuka like it's the most wonderful thing in the universe. Like candy. Which is funny. His general go-to food is like mac and cheese and pizza. <laughs> but Kamaboko, he's down with it. He likes Naruto too. Naruto Maki, which was actually what we're going to do next. But. And today I did... Th uh, see. Don't care for that. Sometimes the Kamaboko comes out redder on the edges, and I think they just use more dye. Dang it. I prefer this. More subtle. Especially if I'm going to Photoshop it and I need more vibrance on other things. It doesn't make the red stuff look like it's nuclear. Alright. Food grade baggies. Got them on Amazon. Hmm. Oh man, really? Did I just like waste? No. There we go. Check that out. That's rad. Because if you try to seal, package this stuff up in the freezer, they all stick together, and it's like a pain in the butt. And I generally get maybe like a quarter out of what we got here to actually be used. So I wanted to get little baggies. Maybe the 3x3s three three might have been better. These are 2x2s two off of Amazon. But this is going to take forever. <laughs> cool in the end I'll have my own like little army of Kamaboko and these things kind of have a scent to them which really irritates me I'm sure they're in a, some area that had other stuff but I think all will be well but scented baggies that's like no never heard of such a thing scented baggies This is going to turn into like a really long, long, long video if I like you won't wait around for me to do all these. So I'm going to turn you off and come back in a few. Alright, and we're done with those. So let's put them all in the bag. So we'll have a nice big bag of little Ziplocs in a bigger Ziploc. Yes. We got one. Ha 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 ha. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Look at that. Fifteen slices of comma boko individual serving size that's freaking rad okay now we're gonna go to the obvious other end of the spectrum the Narutamaki need a need a schwiz it's time for a schwizzle cheers purple haze And by the way, beat LA, 
and uh, hopefully uh, baseball won't die this year. So yeah, Naruto Maki. Wow, well, the whole thing is 160 calories. I'd be hard pressed to ever see anybody eat a whole thing of Naruto like this. So. It's a potchability. People are like that. get a Naruto machine because if you look at it it just comes out like a big old turd out of some automation device so we don't want the, the funk ends although nah might be wondering, what is this stuff you're eating? It's Naruto Maki. It's fish cake, just like the Kamaboko. You can like sometimes I'll like start cutting them like this and then get really wa long wide ones, but I think I'm gonna just do these straight barrel cuts. I guess you could call them. Ninety degree ish. They don't really have a lot of flavor, they just add kind of a little bit of nice textured fun fun. It's like a, it's like a little toy for your mouth for chewing. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like, oh, chewing fun. Chewing, 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 chewing. But it's not like candy, candy, candy. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to take a long time to put in baggies, too. So I'll, in effect, put you to sleep like a Borg cube while I do so. Because I don't think anybody really want to watch me do that. I mean, of course, I could come up with witty banter the whole time, but 
I'm still waiting for that bang drink to really work all of its wonderful magic and propensity into my system. Did I finish it? I always want more. No, I don't have any more. Dag nabbit. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. A veritable bounty of Naruto Maki. I'll be back. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> so we got it done man that's sweet check this out I've got like a million little single pieces of Naruto Maki one two three four five six count along seven eight nine ten wait wait eleven twelve thirteen 14, 15, 16, 17, no, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, oh, wow. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, Thirty-one! Ah, 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 ah. Little pieces of Naruto Maki in little Ziploc baggies. Ha-ha. Ha-ha-ha-ha! Yeah, because usually what I was doing, I was putting them all in a big Ziploc bag, uh, like a freezer bag, and laying them flat, and it just didn't work out. They, they would just kind of like bump together, and then you'd like have to break them apart, and when they stuck together and uh, I'd have to bust them apart and then they'd break and you don't want to use that. You want them to look perfect. So Here's another thing I got recently. Thanks to uh, uh, Marco, Marco, Mark over at uh, Hakubaku for cluing me in for what it was called. Kazami Nori. So it's just basically like thin strips of uh, seaweed. But uh, sh roasted shredded seaweed. This was like, uh, oh, I think this one was like four bucks over at Wajamaya. And Wajamaya is ultra expensive. So this is, this is pretty, that was a pretty good deal. And this is like enough seaweed with roasted shredded seaweed to last me for the next millennium. That's before nine of 23. So this will last forever. And it's really light. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll show you a couple more things before I go. So as always, I was gonna bring this for the birthday party thing. This is Laogan Ma Spicy Chili Crisp. This is like the first one I found out about. This one, if you haven't had it, get it. You're gonna love it. This one is a uh, one that's on, uh, what do you call it? The uh, Kickstarter with uh, Vite Ramen. This is the Fly By Jing Szechuan Chili Crisp. I'm gonna say after the time that I've tried both, I still like the Lao Gan Ma the best. Now there's this one, and this is just called Crispy Chili, but God, I can I can never read what the, it's like Kong, Kong, Kong Chung? Uh, Kong Chung type, no, oh, Kong Chung Thai Party Limited uh, on Smoko Avenue? I can't tell. Here's the brand. Here's where it's made. Uh, that's the that's the brand. Kong Chung. Yeah, but uh. This one has uh, Bellicon. This one's like a shrimpy 
chili crisp. So this is this is really different. So now I've got like three different varieties of chili crisp, and I'm gonna like try to find as many as I can. And I, I guarantee there's tons of them. So I, I think it'd be kind of cool to do a roundup of all the different varieties of chili crisp I can find. So I'm gonna keep my eyes freaking sliced, diced, and peeled all over the lens rod for uh, chili crisp. And uh, yeah, so I guess that's that. We got our bagged up Naruto Maki. We got our bagged up Kamaboko. And of course, the cherry stop. Cherry stop of uh, Chashu, right there. And this has been Hans the Ramen Raider wishing you enjoyment of your noodles every day. Uh, if you're under a self imposed quarantine, man, that sucks. Um, find something to do, start blogging. I don't know. I think, uh, I think like. Facebook groups are going to get a lot of play right now because <laughs> there's like a lot of people that are stuck at home. So like blog about weird crap. I'm going to blog about, uh, there was a show that I did a while back and I only did one episode called Weird Weird Show and Tell. I'm going to do the second ever episode of that. I'm not under quarantine or anything, but you know, my kids are, my, my son isn't going to school, so I'm kind of am, <laughs> but uh I got something the other day, or yesterday, it's an ancient, antique Japanese urn with birthday cake from my grandfather's wedding. Yeah, and uh, it's old, and I'm hoping maybe find out if there's somebody who knows how to appraise stuff to see if it's worth something. I, I think it's all handmade, but it's got like... It smells like time. It's 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 amazing. I'll you'll see it. You'll see it. I'll put it on rotato so you can see it really nicely. But uh, yeah, it's something else. And I've got other really weird stuff that I'll show you. So have a good one. Bye.